G'day there guys, it's Marky again with another episode of Revenge. I hope you guys enjoy the content today, sit back, relax, chuck a like on the video and a prawn on the barbie, and I'll see you in the next one, I'm just kidding, enjoy the video. Posted by user Susan Stohillet, titled, A kid told me I was too fat and too old to understand handball, so I stopped holding back. Last week, I, 50 female, was told by a 12 year old boy I was too fat and too old to understand handball. I watched him play with the other kids for a bit and he was a complete ass about it all. He would deliberately taunt the younger kids, promise them he wouldn't get them out, then send devastatingly fast balls at their heads and point and laugh when they got out. He changed the rules so he never got out and blatantly cheated. I inserted myself into the game. He was very condescending and promised to go easy on me. I smashed that ball all over the court. Low shots, high shots, balls with spin. He didn't stand a chance. The best bit was, after I got him out for the fourth time, all the other kids cheered. I spent the rest of the afternoon teaching the younger kids how to play while he sulked in the corner. Petty AF and immature as hell, but super satisfying to see him get his comeuppance. Yes, I'm a terrible person, but he was much nicer to the other kids the next day. Edit, for those wondering why a 50 year old is playing with kids, I'm currently working as an out of school hours care educator in Australia. After school care, gotta love him. I'm talking about handball as in the lunchtime game played by school kids, also known as Foursquare. In this particular version of the game, you each stand in a small square that is part of a larger square. You hit a tennis ball to each other with your hands, or the little rubber handballs. The squares are designated ace, king, queen, and dunce. If you're an ace and you get out, you go back to dunce. If you're in any of the other squares, you leave the field and someone else comes in. We don't play dodgeball, that is barbaric. I've never watched any of the shows that have been referenced, except in passing as I flicked through channels, talking about comments. I was annoyed by both his attitude to the younger kids when he won, and by his assumptions about me based on my age, gender, and body shape. Hope that answers all the questions. Posted by user MissTerm314, titled, Force me to work past my two weeks notice? Fine, I just take my extra week off using sick time. My bosses are jerks, and the company culture is trash. Ever since day one of my job, my bosses cared little about my work and about my well-being in general. They never transitioned me properly through training and never had time for me, because they don't know anything about my work. I had to self-train myself. When I finally found another opportunity, I was like, screw this company and the bosses. I handed in my two weeks notice. HR contacted me and sat me in a meeting room with my bosses to pressure me to stay longer because they needed some more time to find my replacements. My job is very important for industrial work, and if I am not around, the industrial work would have to halt. I asked if I would be paid more for staying longer, and I was told no. I said, okay, I'll be happy to stay an extra week, but after that, I won't be able to stay any longer. Little did they know that I had accumulated sick leave, I don't get compensated for my remaining sick leave days, and I called in sick for the entire week. Best of luck, y'all. Edited to add, I stayed an additional three weeks on top of my two weeks notice. Sorry about the formatting because I'm on mobile. Edit two, wow, I didn't expect this post to gain much attention. There was some confusion as to why I had agreed to stay an extra week. I was forced to stay an extra week so that I could train the new hire. I'm the only one who knows how to do this work for the week. Posted by user Alfalfa Floozy, titled, Lady demands to speak to an American, never says what language she wants. Some background. I'm an American that was born and raised in the South. It's an obvious dialect. Also, English is second language for most people here. Language barriers are not uncommon. All of this comes into the revenge. So, years ago, I worked in a call center. It was a large company with English and Spanish departments. I worked in the English department, but sat next to our Spanish department. I handled billing. No one calls billing in a good mood, but in general, they're angry with the company, not the rep. You calm them down, fix the issue, and you're off to the next call. 
Few customers are memorable, but this one I will never forget, and I still laugh. This call happened on a busy day with long wait times. This just made the revenge sweeter. The call went like this. Ring, ring, hello? Thank you for calling, blah, blah, blah. I want an American on the phone. What? I said I want an American on the phone. Ma'am, I am an American. I want an American on the phone. At this point, I can only assume I'm not speaking the right language. Un momento, por favor. I put her on hold, transfer her over to the Spanish line, and just giggled to myself. But it didn't end there. The lines were starting to calm down, and I was chatting with one of the Spanish reps when his desk mate pops up and says she's got a psycho on the phone. It was the woman I had transferred. She was going ballistic. The Spanish rep had her on mute while talking to us. I apologized and told her what happened. She started laughing, then looks right at me and said, I'm going to put her back in the Spanish queue. The Spanish department had a blast laughing at this crazy woman as they kept putting her back in the queue. I don't know if she ever got her issue fixed. Then again, we never found out what the issue was either. She was too busy yelling at everyone. Moral of the story, be nice to phone reps. I worked in a call center and I had a guy scream at me for stealing American jobs and once I had a lady ask me, where are you from? I can't understand your accent. I said, I'm from the US. No, but where were you born? I say, in the US. No, ah, where were your parents born? In the US. And she says, well, I'm from the US and we don't sound like you. <laughs> to many people, if you don't have their accent, which many of them claim they don't have, then they tell you that you have an accent. True, but I'm from Oregon, and this lady had no discernible accent to me, so I'm not sure what she was hearing. Also, once in a while, people love to tell us that we all sound like robots, and I had one guy who was convinced I must be the automated system, despite me saying, no sir, I'm not the automated system, and no sir, I'm not a robot, I'm a person. But he was convinced that I was some kind of system that was programmed to say it was human because you sound like a robot. Posted by user Restless Bitch Face, titled I Fed the Tramp Dog Treats. Buckle up, kiddos, this is a long and exciting ride. The year was 2006. I was a dumb girl that had gone and gotten myself married to someone completely wrong for me. He refused to work and as a result of financial difficulties of us both being in school and only me working, we found us living with his mum. Let me tell you, that is every newlywed's dream. Over the course of us living with her, any time I would buy myself a food treat, mother-in-law would eat it. Didn't matter what it was or where I hid it, she was a bloodhound for sniffing out things that I bought just for me. The final straw was one night we had gone out for dinner at the Cheesecake Factory, I had taken my slice to go and put it in the fridge. I was gonna have it after the work the next day. Next day at work is absolute crap, and the only thing getting me through my shift is the slice of cheesecake I know is in my fridge. I go home and pop the lid off the container, and it doesn't look right. There are mother frickin' fork marks all around the outside perimeter of my cheesecake. Like, she could just sneak some off all around and I wouldn't notice. I was ticked. I went and handed it to her and told her she may as well eat the rest of it. Fast forward a few days, and I'm at the pet store picking up some dog food. I'm standing in line waiting to check out, and they have all these little boxes of dog treats that look like the little red boxes of animal crackers you can buy for little kids. Now, it very clearly says in the front, circus animals for dogs. About this time, I've got the little devil sitting on my shoulder whispering in my ear, do it. And then the angel pops onto my other shoulder and screams, fudging do it. So they magically end up with the stuff I'm buying. I drive home and leave everything in a bag all together on the kitchen counter. Several hours later, she comes into our room and says, I think there was something wrong with those animal crackers. They were the most awful ones I've ever eaten. I had to eat a whole thing of frosting with them just to finish them. All I said was, huh, 
and shrugged my shoulders. Oh, that makes my skin crawl. That's disgusting. Ew, I would never eat animal stuff like that. That's just gross. I would never. Posted by user TravelingGal23, titled Car Alarm for the Win. This was a few years ago, but one day, my neighbors across the road came home with a new system in their car. They decided to invite several people over, open their car doors, and crank the music. Not only was this terrible music, but it made the walls of my house vibrate, and I had a migraine. Ah, oh, that sounds the worst. Now, you'd think this would only go on for a minute or two just to show the friends what it could do. But no. I saw one of my neighbors go to talk to them. After they walked away, they turned it up even louder. So, having no other alternative than to annoy them, I hit the alarm button for my vehicle. Luckily enough, my vehicle at the time had a very loud and annoying alarm. When I did this, they looked around and turned down their music. So I turned the alarm off. A few seconds later, they crank it back up. I turned my alarm back on. This happened about three times before they got the message and had their music at a normal level. Posted by user CJ Sopinion, titled, Steal My Friend's Orange? Enjoy a Night of Puking. My BFF and I were sitting in English literature. She had an orange on her desk. This boy took it and refused to give it back. He wasn't being a bully or anything, but kind of teasing, and then he ate it in front of us while he was laughing. So we told him he shouldn't have eaten it. And he says, why not? Because it was in my locker for two weeks. I was going to throw it away after class. Yeah, plus she dropped it on the floor and we were kicking it around. And then I stabbed it with my pencil. I think part of the lead broke off in it. I hope you don't get lead poisoning. He accused us of lying, and we just shrugged and ignored him for the rest of the class. The next day he came to class, he didn't look too good. Said he was up that night puking. We told him we were just kidding, that none of what we said happened. Poor guy. Didn't know what to believe at that point. Edit, the orange was fresh and we did not mess with it. We only messed with his mind. Posted by user Skyfly Thai Food, titled Lockdown with Annoying Neighbors? I Can Be Just as Annoying. So, this is my first ever post, so please don't be too harsh. LOL. To make a long story short, I have the most annoying neighbors in all of England. One in particular has a son who runs rampant and spends hours in his back garden that is joined to ours, screaming at the top of his lungs, or peeking over the fence and shouting at us while his mother tells him off. Not for screaming or his other antisocial behaviors, no, just because she's a horrible mother. I feel a little bad for the kid, and she happens to have the most grating voice in the world. This goes on from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., so I can't put in a noise complaint. But the most annoying thing is the hours of horrendous music. Now, we're not talking just regular, objectively bad music. Don't be silly. It is honest to God, EDM, traffic noise, whatever has the highest usage of the N-word. She's a white woman, by the way. That she'll shout at the top of her lungs so that you know she's an open racist. Today, I had had enough. So I found the loudest speaker in my house, dragged it outside, placed it against her fence, and played some music for two hours straight as loud as possible, and any time one of them screamed or shouted, I would scream back just as loud. Needless to say, she went inside after the second hour, and hopefully will be more considerate in the future. Posted by user Blititis82, titled, Dealing with Neighborhood Fireworks. A few years ago, I was working at a place that required me to wake up very early in the morning to get to work. My neighbors, enthusiastic patriots that they were, began their July 4 celebrations weeks before the holiday, blasting ordinance far later than decency and city regulations allowed. It woke me, freaked out my dog, and woke my son. The next morning, I parked in their driveway and honked my horn until they came out to confront me. I told them that I would repeat this every morning if they continued their celebrations past 9pm as the city mandated. I only had to do this once. Good on you, OP. I'm very proud of you. 
posted by user Revenge of the Funk, titled Talk Crap About My Friend, I Will Ruin Your Night. I went to a bar about 15 minutes away with a co-worker who is chunky. We were playing pool and having fun when I hear the group at the next table over talking crap about my friend. So a little while goes by and I realize that the guy who was talking crap left his phone on the ledge near the pool table and he and his group moved to another area. I gave my friend my keys and said to get in and start it up and unlock my door. She did, and I grabbed the phone and we dipped and I dropped her off. I then hit a drive through and called the guy's mum in his phone. I went through his recent texts and got a few friends' names and told his mum I was with friends with her son and some of his friends at the bar, and he was trashed and doing god knows what in the bathroom. And I also said he left with this really skanky girl and might be having unprotected sex with her and she looks like a junkie. Then I started calling random numbers in his phone and yelling at whoever answered. So now it's like 2am and it's a Friday night. The guy whose phone I have realized what's going on and calls his phone. He doesn't know who I am, just that I'm the a-hole with his phone. I tell him I didn't appreciate what he was saying about my friend and he wanted his phone back. Now keep in mind the only people on this road at this house are drunks and cops. So I told him I would leave his phone by the giant sign at a local mall, right at the base of it. He probably lived nearby, but it was still 15 minutes from the bar, which was past closed at this point. So it's like 3am and he calls me asking where his phone is because he obviously went to the mall to look for it. I asked him what mall and he told me. I was like, no, not X mall. I said Y mall, which was another 20 to 25 minutes away. He hung up, and then a few days later, I threw his phone under the tire of a semi on the freeway. That was a thing I would later do when working as a waiter, when people would lose their phone and also not tip. If they didn't tip me, they must have thought I was not a good server, and a good server would have given their phone back. So, since I was not a good server, I would keep their phone and play dumb. It was a restaurant in a mall, so lots of people in and out. My friends thought I was nuts. I always had random cell phones on me and would randomly discard them at random times and places. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Posted by user Anonymous8543, titled, Don't Mess With The Holidays. Disclaimer, this story isn't mine, it's from a friend. Backstory. We live in Portugal. Here, there is a law that states that if someone abandons a plot of land, and that is used by someone else for a minimum of 20 years, that person has the right to claim the land for themselves. This friend of mine has inherited a house in a town. This town is basically a beach holiday town. The rich people of the city nearby often have a house there and spent the whole summer there. This was during the early 20th century. Some people still do that, including my friend. So, his family has been using a spot right next to their house as a playground for the kids, for way more than 20 years. In fact, for over 50. They hadn't yet needed to claim it since the owner didn't do anything to it, and as the whole neighborhood used it, doing that would be asshole Until two years ago, when he decided to sell it to a couple that built a two-story house there. The house completely ruins the view that he had over the sea, and also ruins the look of the neighborhood due to its differences to other houses. So my friend decided to claim the land. This was before the house was built, but since Portuguese justice is slow AF, the house was already fully built when it ended. This time with the approval of the other neighbors. The couple that had bought it had some friends in the justice system. The wife's mother was a retired judge, her sister was a very well-known and respected lawyer, so they managed to overcome my friend's claims, on a technicality, but from the start, it was obvious that my friend should have gotten it. The way they got it was very shady. They only won because they knew people, and this is why he decided to get his revenge. The street between the two houses had free parking everywhere. This is because most people in the neighborhood are friends and don't have garages, so they park in front of their house. But the annoying neighbors had a garage. My friend had a truck that once was used for a restaurant of his, and he parked it right in front of their garage door permanently. It was actually legal since they hadn't paid the town council a yearly fee to have non-parking spot there. 
After a few months, they decided to get that. That costs 8,000 euro a year to maintain. Until this point, it was more out of a petty revenge, but the annoying neighbors had threatened him to remove his vehicle before that. They have said that they would throw rocks at his windows, which they once did, that they would flood his garden, which they did repeatedly, and even that they would kill his dog, a German Shepherd. They tried that using a knife, but the dog bit the guy on his leg. And as you know, these dogs bite hard. The threats were all recorded by my friend, since he would record every conversation he'd had with them in person or over the phone. He had taken pictures of the window and the garden. He sued them, and this time the influences weren't enough. They had to pay a 10,000 euro repair for the window and garden. He has a friend that elevated the costs conveniently quite highly, and they had to pay him a further 30,000 euro in compensation for the mental health issues it caused. But wait, there's more. Remember when they tried to kill the dog? They had done it when he wasn't home, so he never even knew about it. Out of rage, they sued my friend for his dog biting the man's leg. He had to spend a week in the hospital as it got very badly infected and tried to make him pay for the hospital fees and compensation. But he defended himself by saying they invaded his property and even sued them for that, which led to a one year suspended jail time which means if they are ever convicted of something, they will spend that year in jail on top of that conviction sentence. If they don't do anything else, they won't be going to jail. Hope you enjoyed this story. I certainly did when he told it to me. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would love you to subscribe because I love your face and I love seeing you here every single day that you are here in this video. I don't know what else to say today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. I do have a second channel that's called Marky2. Link should be up on the screen somewhere here if you don't have Adblock installed. Uh, if you don't know where to find the channel, you can go to my main page. Just click on the Marky face and it should be on the right somewhere there or on channels if you're on phone. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.